Along the coast of Florida, the first Anglo-European settlers to this region found large mounds. Many of the mounds known about to date were not discovered till the last two centuries, and it's also unknown how many mounds that remain undiscovered or impacted by modern civilization. One common type of mound found are shell mounds. Shell mounds are man-made mounds that consist of large piles of shells and are made by a variety of remains of bones and shells from the sea life eaten. The mounds are referred to as middens or Indian mounds. These sites are usually elevated where a hardwood closed canopy community lived, farmed, and thrived. The typical plant life that's found in these areas include live oak, hackberry, red cedar, coral bean, mulberry, and cabbage palm. Shell mounds are considered archaeological remains and are protected from damage by local, state, and federal laws. Archaeological evidence indicates that North America's earliest inhabitants migrated from Asia to what is now Alaska. This was between 12,000 and 15,000 years ago. As recent as 2019, archaeologists at Cooper's Ferry in the state of Idaho discovered artifacts that radiocarbon dates place humans in Northwest America 16,500 years ago. Migrating Paleo-Indian tribes moved southward and east to make the Florida Peninsula their home. These tribes would discover Florida in a time when it was much cooler and drier, so it would look and feel a lot different than it does now. To get a better perspective of a timeline of the first human inhabitants of North America, including Florida, there are three time frames that occurred prior to the arrival of Europeans. They are the Paleo-Indian, the Archaic, and the Woodland periods. Here's a timeline to have a clear reference. Early Archaic, 8000 BC. The last glacial period is ending causing the sea levels to rise and flood the Beringia Bridge. This closes a primary migration route from Siberia. 7000 BC. The Native Americans in Lohatan Basin, Nevada mummify their dead to honor and respect them, showing evidence of a culture that cared deeply for others in their community. Middle Archaic, 6500 BC to 200 AD. The Chihuahua and San Deguito Pinto traditions flourish in the southwest. 6000 BC. The Eluits arrived in the Aleutian Islands. 5500 BC. The Osara tradition, which is a southwestern archaic tradition, arises in southern Colorado, southeastern Utah, the San Juan Basin, the Rio Grande Valley, and north-central New Mexico, which lasted until roughly 500 AD. 5000 BC to 200 AD, the Cochise tradition arises in the American Southwest. Native Americans in the northern Great Lakes produce copper tools, ornaments, and utensils traded throughout the Great Plains and Ohio Valley. Let's jump forward, closer to our current era, past the Late Archaic Period, into 1 AD. Some Central and Eastern Prairie peoples learned to raise crops and shape pottery from the mound builders to their east. 100 AD to 1000 AD. The Whedon Island culture flourishes along the coasts of Florida. They are known for their extraordinarily well-preserved wood carvings. 1000 AD to 1750 AD, or current era. A non-Mississippian culture known as the Fort Ancient Culture emerges in western West Virginia, northern Kentucky, modern-day southern Ohio, and 
southeastern Indiana. Understanding these different periods of time is important for understanding who these first people to the Americas were and how they lived. The Paleo-Indian period refers to approximately 12,000 years before present, or BP. This is also referred to as the Lithic Stage, or Paleolithic Era. The last Ice Age was coming to an end, which made it possible for nomadic tribes to migrate in larger populations south, from Alaska to South America, and other tribes migrated through Canada, far on the eastern Atlantic coast, from Nova Scotia to the coastline of Florida. It's during this period in which records begin to give us a glimpse into their lives. One of these groups of people is known as the Clovis people. The Clovis culture is a prehistoric Paleo-American culture. They are named for the distinct stone tools they created discovered in Clovis, New Mexico in the early 1900s. Though many generations of different tribes and cultures thrived here in the Americas, it was not until roughly 3500 BCE that those whom flourished here transformed from a strictly hunter-gatherer culture into a large community of farmers. Once these communities stopped traveling long distances to follow wild game, they relied solely on the climate and the weather. Much like many generations before, they turned to God and religion to bless their crops more or less using religion as a glue to hold their community together. Therefore, mounds are found around the Great Lakes, the Ohio River Valley, the Mississippi River Valley, and all throughout Florida. These mounds are structures that were used for burials and ceremonies. These mounds are usually flat-topped pyramids, some of them with rounded cones or elongated ridges. In Collinsville, Illinois, there is a mound which reaches over 100 feet and it is the biggest pre-Columbian earthwork north of Mexico. This is known as Monk's Mount at Cohica. Cohica was a vast settlement with an estimated 20,000 to 30,000 people living as a community of individuals that farmed large areas of land. Parkin Indian Mound is an archeological site and state park in Parkin Cross County, Arkansas. Around the years 1350 to 1650, an Aboriginal village lived there in this area and it gets its name from the type site or archaeological culture of a specific time period, which is what archaeologists call the Parkin Phase. The Parkin Phase was 1400 to 1700 CE, so this was almost 12,000 years after mounds were being built across the American continent. Historical tales say that when the first settlers arrived, they asked the Native Americans who built the large mounds. Because of their size and scale, it was believed that it could not have been possible for the Native Americans to construct them on their own. During this time, the Anglo-Europeans were claiming North America's land as their own, and they believed themselves to be superior. There is no excuse for poor judgment or principles, but remember, this was a time before science and technology was available to accurately date artifacts. In the 1800s, there were massive campaigns of genocide for the ethnic cleansing of the North American continent, such as President Andrew Jackson's war against the American Indians, a war in which he received assistance from other Indian tribes. For example, in the Battle of Tohopeka, Jackson received the military aid of the Creek and Cherokee Indian tribes, which ultimately led to the surrender of Red Eagle in the Creek Rebellion. Over 23 million acres of Indian-occupied land was ceded to the U.S., and this includes land from former allies and enemies. On October 25, 1814, Andrew Jackson and his army invaded Florida in an effort to decimate the Native American population, while also taking and transforming their native land as U.S. territory. At that point in history, many of the sites scattered throughout and along the coasts of Florida had been abandoned for nearly two millennia. For it was during the Archaic and Woodland periods in which many of the mounds across the North America continent were constructed and utilized. It was around 2000 BCE when we start to see evidence that these Native Americans built these large mound structures for both ceremonial purposes and burial purposes. It should come as little surprise. Most of these sacred sites usually contain several mounds and have been looted across the centuries. So it's hard to imagine how much of the natives' culture and history has actually been lost. Cache Mound in Charlotte County, Florida is a midden that stands 15 feet high and covers two to three acres on Turtle Bay. Many portions of Cache Mound were removed for road fill. In fact, as ridiculous as it seems, 
It was common in the early 1900s in Florida to use middens or Indian mounds for roads after the advent of modern automobile as the means of transportation. Because these mounds were large and built from hundreds of years of shell and bones from discarded fish and wildlife that had been rained on millions of times, it made these mountains of a perfect material to use for roads and was cheaper than brick and it was before asphalt was widely used. Unfortunately, doing so also resulted in the ultimate loss and reshaping of these historical land structures. It's impossible to really know how much of the Native American's history has been looted, especially in Florida. Today, the state or federal government has claimed ownership of these mounds and turned them into parks. The simple fact that the government now owns the land is no guarantee of protection. You can find a historical marker on the east side of the Bayway Boulevard on what is now Fort DeSoto Park in St. Petersburg, Florida that reads, a large Indian burial mound was built on this spot about 1500 AD. It was used for some years by nearby inhabitants of Safety Harbor Culture Village. This is known as the Terra Verde Burial Mound. Really? Was it? To call what once existed here Terra Verde is an insult to the people that created it and not to mention the dates on some of these mounds. Again, at another location further south in neighboring Sarasota is what is known as Yellow Bluffs Mound. All that remains now is a historical marker. <laughs>